Hello, today I'm going to show you how to set up a home music wireless streaming system based around some Sonos products and a NAS drive. Now here at my house I've got a Sonos Play 5 here in the kitchen, I've got another Play 5 in the bedroom, I've got a Play 1 in the bathroom and in my living room I've got a Sonos Play Bar and a Sonos Subwoofer. Now the way I've got my system set up is by using a NAS drive. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage and in my opinion this is the only way to set up a home music wireless streaming system. Now a lot of people go out and buy Sonos products and they just subscribe to Spotify and using their iPhone they will stream music to the Sonos system using that method. Others will import CDs onto their computer. Now the trouble with doing that is that once you've put the CDs on the computer to use it via Sonos the computer's got to be switched on otherwise Sonos won't actually recognize it. Whereas by using a NAS drive you can use a piece of software to rip all the CDs to the NAS drive and once they're there you don't need the computer to be switched on to be able to play that music via your Sonos system. In fact you don't even need the computer anymore you can get rid of it it doesn't even have to be in the house because the way it works the NAS drive is plugged into your router and the Sonos system will simply pick it up off the router so you can stream music. Now this drive that I'm using here is made by a company called QNAP and it's the model TS251. Now this one was supplied by a company in Reading called Ripcaster. In my opinion I would buy this drive from Ripcaster simply because it's already configured and set up. They've installed the software and the firmware and it will work right out of the box. Now you can buy a QNAP drive off the internet but the trouble with doing it that way is there won't be any physical hard drives in it so then you'll have to try and source a couple of hard drives which is quite easy admittedly but then it's buying hard drives that are designed to run all day long without making any noise and without overheating. The guys at Ripcaster will supply a QNAP drive with good quality hard drives built in from a company like Western Digital, perhaps their RED models and like I said it's all configured and set up and ready to go. Besides if you buy one off the internet and put the hard drives in yourself by the time you add up the cost of the drive with the hard drives and you've done all that messing around you're not actually saving anything but you're just giving yourself a big headache with having to set up the software and install the firmware and get it all configured. So I would implore you to buy one from Ripcaster so that out of the box it will just work straight away. So let's get right to it I'm going to show you how to set this up and get it working for your home music wireless streaming system. Now here as you can see I've got five boxes of CDs absolutely filled to the top. I've got hundreds of CDs that I've built up over the years and I don't mind admitting that it's going to take quite a long time to import these onto the QNAP drive but when I do it will be worth it because I'll be able to access all this music via the Sonos app off the network and besides this QNAP drive has got two physical hard drives inside and I've got this set up as a mirror RAID so what gets put onto one drive is backed up and copied onto the other. So it's not like you're going to be playing Russian Roulette with just one drive because if one of the drives does give up the ghost for any reason you can just pop it out, pop another one in and then all the content off the other drive will just copy back to it. So you've always got it backed up so it's not like you're going to be wasting weeks and weeks and weeks importing CDs only to have them die on a hard drive. So not only is the QNAP a really good network attached storage device but it actually backs up all your music on two separate drives as well. So here we are on the Ripcaster website. Their website address is www.ripcaster.co.uk and as you can see they specialize in all things to do with music streaming for the home. They have all the Sonos equipment and over here on the NAS storage link you will find all the details about the NAS drives that they do. Again if you buy from Ripcaster the NAS drives will be set up and configured so you won't have to mess around with all the software and firmware and try and get it going yourself. It will quite literally work straight out of the box. This is the DV Power Ramp website where they do the CD ripping software called DV Power Ramp and this is a software that the guys at Ripcaster recommend and I also recommend it. I've used it and it's really good and quite easy to use. I'll just show you how much it is if you click on purchase here you've got purchase DV power amp and if you click on that you'll see a single license is simply 30 pounds so it's it's not too expensive it's pretty cheap and it really is a brilliant piece of software and this is what you will need to download for ripping your CDs onto the NAS drive.
The only other thing you'll have to do is download QFinder Pro, which is a piece of software that you can download for free from the QNAT website that will allow you to find your NAS drive on the network. Now you simply go to solutions, so not solutions, support, download, and in here you'll simply choose what type of drive you have. In my case, it's the two, drive, two bay drive and it's the TS251. And then here I will click on utilities and it comes up right at the top, QNAP Finder Pro for Mac. If you're on Windows, then they've got the, um, the, the Windows versions here as well. So once you've downloaded that, that will enable your network to find the drive. And the website URL is www.qnap.com slash en hyphen UK. Okay, I'm now going to walk you through what you need to do after you've downloaded the QFinder Pro software from the QNAP website. So once you've downloaded that and installed it, you simply open up the application and all you're looking for here is this section here where it says name and underneath it, there will be a model number. In this instance, it's got TS251. So all you need to do is remember this name here. And then once you remember that, you can then quit this application and you simply go to go, you go down to connect to server. And in this part here, you would basically type in two slashes followed by TS251, and then you simply click connect. When you click connect, it will automatically put this SMB here. That's telling you that it's done. And then you can simply close this window. And then you go back to go, and then you go down to network, and in network, you will now see it's got the TS251. And if I click on it, in here, there's a few folders. The important one is the multimedia folder, which is where all your music is going to be kept. As you can see, there's a few pieces of music that I've already imported here. Just recently, a Zig Zig Sputnik album. Some of you may or may not remember them from back in the day. And it's basically been ripped in using the software that I mentioned called DB Power Amp. I'm now going to open DB Power Amp, and this is what the DB Power Ramp software looks like. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just click on the preferences here and show you a few things that you might have to change. In fact, the only thing you probably want to leave all these settings at their default setting the burst, faster ripping, no error recovery. Now, that might sound a bit scary, but it's, it does a flawless job because if you actually use the secure recover errors option, then it's really aggressive on your CD drive and it goes back and forth, back and forth, and it'll, it'll literally wear your CD, CD drive out. So you don't need to have that. So leave this at the default burst. The only thing I've changed in here is after rip, I actually put it to a Jet CD as opposed to do nothing. So I just like to have it to a Jet CD so that it'll pop out the drive and I know that it's done. Uh, so that's literally all you need to change in there. Now, down here on the left-hand side, the profile, leave that at default. RIP2, I've actually got this set to FLAC because it's my favorite audio compression um, of, of choice. There's other options in here, but I would recommend FLAC because it's basically a lossless um, compression codec. All it's gonna do is reduce the file size, but not take away any of the quality. So you're gonna maintain 100% of the quality of the CD by doing that. Over here, under the encoder section here, if it's not highlighted, then highlight it and under the encoding, choose lossless uncompressed. By default, it will be at number five. Now this is basically just how fast it compresses it. So if you have it set to the fastest, it means that your streamer, whether it's a, a Sonos system, will have to work a little bit harder to decompress it because it's compressed the file a little bit more on this setting here for fast. Whereas if you have it set to lossless uncompressed at the bottom, the file size will be about 10% bigger, but it means that the Sonos system will have to work a lot less. So that's the one that I would recommend there. And then what you have to do here is you've got to set the path as to where you want your CDs to be stored once they've been ripped. So you simply click on the set button here. And then what I've done, I basically just pointed it to the um, to where my NAS drive is and in this instance I just basically went to the TS251 and I selected it and then I selected multimedia and then I clicked open and that is simply how you set it. So next let's pop a CD in and then I'll show you how this works. As you can see I've just put in a Clash album of Greatest Hits 
I'm going to actually uh, quit iTunes there because iTunes automatically opens when you put a CD in. Um, sorry about that, I forgot to turn it off. So um, here's the DB Power Amp software again, and you can see that all the tracks have come up here. Now down here it says where it's got no album art, you can click on this little square here and click choose from the internet and then it will come up, hopefully, yeah there we go, with various options for that. Now I'm actually holding the CD in my hand here um, as you can see and I know that it's this one at the top left so I will select that one and then I just simply click on this button at the top left here that says rip and now it will bring in the songs one at a time. Now for an average rock pop CD of about an hour long it will take around about sort of three minutes depending. Okay so when the CD is finished importing you can see here under the rip status that it's accurate for all of the tracks so they've all imported perfectly okay. So now we can just click on the eject symbol to eject the CD. Okay so now we can quit DB Power Amp and if we go back to the finder and go to go and then click on network we can see here under the drive and under multimedia that we have the Clash album that I imported. All the tracks are here and we even have the artwork for the CD. So that is pretty much how the whole import process works from using the QFinder Pro and DB Power Up Music Converter.